This story didn't begin inside a factory. There were no executives, no detailed plans, no billion-dollar strategies. It started in the dusty back of a workshop, with one unusual question scribbled next to a sketch. What if movement could be lighter? Not stronger, not faster, just smarter. The kind of idea most engineers dismiss. But one young mind didn't. What followed wasn't an upgrade to a motor. It was a new way of imagining motion itself. An old principle, rediscovered. A machine so slim and silent, it threatened everything the industry thought it knew. What made it so disruptive? And why did it surface now? Let's see. The obsession that sparked it. Before there were patents or headlines, there was only a desk, a small room, and a restless thinker. His name rarely appears in the media. He wasn't chasing fame or fortune, only a question he couldn't ignore. For years, he watched machines waste energy, heat where there should be power, bulk where there could be elegance. He wasn't searching for the next big product. He just wanted to understand why today's designs felt wrong. Electric motors fascinated him, but not like they did other engineers. While others pushed for more horsepower and maximum output, he obsessed over losses. Where was the energy going? Why did coils overheat? Why did power drop at the very moment it mattered most? He began sketching a motor unlike the usual kind. No thick iron frame, no tangled bundles of wire, just slim, flat geometry with an invisible field stretched across its face. He wasn't aiming to impress. Most who saw his notes thought he overlooked something obvious. No yoke, split coils. It looked unstable, unworkable. But he continued, day after day, trial after trial, building test models from scraps, not to start a company, but to satisfy a feeling, a quiet belief that motion could be refined, not heavier, not louder, just sharper. That obsession soon unlocked something no one in the automotive world expected. Not a better motor, but a new logic for how machines could move. The physics they got wrong. For decades, electric motors were built on a simple idea. Spin a shaft, run current through coils, let magnets do their work. It functioned well enough. It powered drills, trains, and cars. But inside that simplicity hid a flaw, one engineers accepted without challenge. In the common radial flux motor, magnetic fields radiate outward from the center like spokes on a wheel. It's tried, reliable, and well understood. But here's the problem. The sections nearest the center contribute little, yet add weight. Copper coils extend past the magnetic zone, forming end windings that produce no power, only heat. Then there's the yoke, a heavy iron shell to guide the field. Necessary, but mostly dead weight. This wasn't a mistake of skill. It was a mistake of assumption. Everyone thought this was the limit. But what if the field didn't spread outward? What if it flowed sideways along the rotation axis, like a disc pressing energy between its plates? That flips the geometry. It pushes the field exactly where it's needed. The dead zones vanish. The waste disappears. And a new type of motion emerges. A design that shouldn't work. At first glance, it seemed impossible. Too flat. Too bare. Too fragile. Engineers saw the sketches and shook their heads. With no yoke, the iron ring that normally anchors everything, how would the field stay aligned? How would it handle real stress? But that absence was intentional. Instead of forcing magnetism through iron bulk, this layout let it flow directly between two thin spinning disks. The field didn't radiate outward. It moved sideways, axially, 
like unseen glue between plates. The coils weren't bundled together either. They were broken into segments, spaced apart, arranged in a way that looked more like art than machinery. Cooling air could slip through the gaps exactly where it was needed. To traditional engineers, it looked like a prototype that would tear itself apart. Too delicate, too strange, too risky. But under tests, it survived. Again and again, no overheating, no rattling. Smooth, fast, strong. This wasn't just a new form, it was a new language. A different kind of motion. One that obeyed new rules, because someone dared to question the old ones. Turning silence into power. While flashy startups grabbed attention with big batteries and giant touchscreens, this motor evolved quietly. No launch parties, no viral clips, just steady refinements, tuning fields, trimming weight, testing materials. Each prototype returned the same question. Could it scale? The answer came not from luxury cars, but from industries that needed compact, unstoppable torque. Small aircraft builders noticed. So did advanced bike makers. In fields where every gram mattered and every watt had to count, the new motor wasn't just acceptable, it excelled. It wasn't built to be loud, it was built to be smart. The benefits weren't just theory anymore. Cooler coils meant longer bursts of force. Axial flux gave more torque in less space. Without the iron yoke, the motor weighed less than a laptop, yet could power industrial-grade machines. This wasn't a revolution shouted from rooftops. It was whispered in labs, where test results quietly beat expectations. Power didn't need to roar. It just needed to last longer, run cooler, and perform smarter. And soon, this quiet machine had a voice no one could ignore. The first test that changed everything. The breakthrough didn't happen on a track. It happened in a wind tunnel, with engineers staring at numbers that seemed impossible. A dinner plate-sized axial motor was outperforming hardware twice its size. Torque held steady under stress. Heat stayed controlled. And when pushed harder, the motor didn't falter. It delivered. No whining. No lag, just clean, precise force. The room fell silent, not because of failure, but because everyone knew something unusual had occurred. A design once dismissed as unstable had just rewritten the rules. That same week, the data spread. Aerospace labs passed it to automakers. Robotics groups asked questions. Even defense contractors showed interest, not for weapons, but for drones, satellites, autonomous craft, any system where weight and reliability were critical. This wasn't an accident. It was a shift. For years, the motor lived only in notebooks and prototypes. But that quiet test proved it belonged in the real world. And that's when things accelerated more than speed. At first, people treated it as a performance trick, a shortcut to faster sprints or sharper turns, but its true impact went deeper. It wasn't about speed, it was about precision, balance, control. In most drivetrains, power arrives in bursts. Gears shift, turbos spool, motors surge. But this axial design was different. It was steady, predictable. Engineers realized they could install smaller versions exactly where needed. In a motorcycle wheel, inside an aircraft wing, between robotic joints. Each placement added new finesse. Movement could now be sculpted in real time. Not just pushed forward, but guided inch by inch, millisecond by millisecond. It changed how machines climbed, curved, and even stopped under stress. And since it ran cooler and cleaner, it didn't need bulky cooling systems or oversized batteries. 
That freed space for passengers, sensors, or cargo. This wasn't just a better engine. It was a redesign of motion itself. When power stops being the problem, imagination takes over. And that's where the real story begins. Why their design could outlive the car. The brilliance of this design isn't tied to one product. It lies in how flexible it is, how easily it slips into roles where normal motors can't. Strip away the weight, heat, and waste, and you're left with something pure. Motion that fits anywhere. Farm engineers saw possibilities. Tractors that don't overheat or waste energy idling. Aviation saw lighter propulsion, safer electric flights. In ocean robotics and space exploration, where every kilogram matters, prototypes already began appearing. And it's not just about performance, it's about simplicity. Fewer parts, easier cooling, minimal upkeep. That makes it scalable. Some technologies rise and fade with market trends. This one isn't tied to cars or consumer fashion. It's a platform, a motor that can shrink, grow, or adapt to whatever is needed. That's why it may outlast the vehicles it powers. Because it's not only built for performance, it's built for possibility. The quiet revolutions are easy to miss. The ones without hype or headlines. But often, it's those subtle breakthroughs that change everything. A motor that rewrote the rules didn't arrive to replace what we know. It arrived to expand what's possible. Across fields, across industries, across ideas. From one sketch in a workshop to a worldwide rethink of motion, this isn't just torque or speed. It's about reimagining the unseen force that drives our world. The future doesn't always roar. Sometimes it hums. And if you listen closely, it's already here.